Hello everyone. You would have noticed that when you try to find the documentation to connect the logic app to Azure SQL Virtual Machine, you don't find one easily. There is Microsoft documentation available for SQL instances, SQL managed database, as well as on-prem SQL server, where Microsoft recommends to use on-prem data gateway to connect the on-prem SQL server to Azure logic app. But in the case of the Azure SQL Virtual Machine, there is no documentation available. However, you can use the same on-prem data gateway to connect the Azure SQL Virtual Machine to Logic App. But that will be an overkill because you don't need a secure bridge to connect your SQL Virtual Machine because it's already in Azure. That's why the name of the data gateway is on-prem data gateway. So if your Azure SQL Virtual Machine has only a private IP address, so so by default, Logic App cannot connect to Azure SQL Virtual Machine. And in this video, I'll cover how to connect your Logic App privately to the SQL Virtual Machine in Azure. So let's start. So now you have deployed a Windows Virtual Machine where there is a SQL Server running. It has a private IP address and it is in the database subnet. It, the name of the subnet can be anything. It's a part of the virtual network and the Azure Logic App which is a public endpoint service, it's a pass service. So by default, the pass service cannot connect to the resources in your virtual network. So when you try to create a connection between the Azure Logic App and the SQL Virtual Machine, it will fail. So to make it successful, what needs to be done is you need to do the VNet integration of the Azure Logic App. In the case of the VNet integration, a specific dedicated a subnet will be created we can name it anything, but a dedicated subnet with a minimum net mask of 27 has to be created. And when the VNet integration will be done, a private IP will be assigned to the Azure Logic App. And once that private IP is assigned, then the connectivity between the private IP of the application subnet and the private IP of the SQL virtual machine can communicate with each other because they are part of the virtual network. So this is the default configuration I'm talking about where the NSGs allow the connection within the virtual network. But if you have firewall in place, then you need to allow the connectivity from application subnet to the database subnet over port 1433, which is the SQL port. So there are two important points to consider. So the first point is VNet integration, which is covered now. And the second important point to consider is while creating the workflow in the logic app, to connect to the SQL VM, when you define a connector there, there are two different connectors available, version one and version two. But in this case, you have to specifically use version one because the version two gives a gateway error and it fails. So let's check the end-to-end -end deployment in the lab. I'm logged into Azure portal now. And let's start with the creation of virtual machine. Let's go to virtual machine. Let's name it as SQL server. Let's create a new resource group, RG SQL. Let's name this virtual machine as SQL Server 01. I'll let Azure decide the zone. And let's go to the images and look for SQL Server 2019. Let's select the free SQL Server license, which will be a developer SQL Server on Windows 2019 Server. Let's select this one. Otherwise, you will need to pay for the SQL license too. So I'll select the B2S. The size is fine for me. Let's provide the username and password. I'll deploy a Bastion service. So I'll disable the public ports. Let's go to virtual network, database subnet, and no public IP. The basic NSG will be created, but no public inbound ports. Go to the management, 
let's uncheck this we don't want auto shutdown go to the monitoring all default advanced setting we are not installing anything let's go to the sql server setting so within the virtual network sql connectivity is allowed on port 1433 and let's enable the sql authentication so let's change it to sql user and I'll, and i'll provide the password and everything else will be default review and create and create SQL Server is getting deployed. So time being, let's deploy the Beston service. Go to Beston, create, and I'm deploying the Beston service as a jump box. The reason is so that I don't need to create a public IP to connect to my virtual machine. So let's deploy the jump box. So let's provide the name as Beston01, Australia East. I'll use the basic tier. Virtual network and I already have a Azure Beston subnet, so I'll provide that. It'll create a new public IP address. Review and create and create. So right now the SQL server is getting deployed as well as the Beston service. So I'll pause the video and we'll be back once both the deployments are complete. It took around five to 10 minutes and now both the deployments are successful. So let's go to the SQL virtual machine now. Virtual machines, SQL server. And that's a Windows 2019 server where there is a SQL server. Because if you go to the settings, you can see the SQL server configuration. Let's try to connect using the Beston. I'm logged into SQL Server 01 now. And let's open SSMS. So when you install this image, the SQL Server Management Studio is part of it. So let's run that. Let's connect to the SQL database engine. The server name is SQL Server 01. We'll choose the SQL Server Authentication. The username is SQL User. I'll provide the password. And I'll change the encryption to optional and connect it. And perfect, I'm connected to the SQL database. So let's create a new database. And let's name it as test DB. So new database is created. Let's run a new query on it so that we can create a table. So let's create an employee table on it. So this is creating an employee table with employee ID, first name, last name, email and hire date. So let's execute this. And a table is created. If we'll go to the tables, there'll be an employees table. And now let's insert some sample data and execute. Now let's check whether this table is updated or not. And yes, you can see the details of the different users with the different employee ID, first name, last name, email, and hire date. So I've just created a sample data so that we can see it when we connect the logic app to this database. And when we'll run the logic app through the workflow, then we'll see these details. So now let's go back to Azure portal and create a logic app. 
add. So now there are multiple options to create a logic app, but because we need the VNet integration, so we have to create a workflow service plan, which is a part of a standard plan. So let's select it. I'll use the same resource group RG SQL and let's name the logic app as shell in the logic app 01. Hopefully it's available. Yes, it is. The region is Australia East. It'll create a new windows plan for me. And the WS one, which is workflow standard one plan should be sufficient. So I'll select that. Next storage. You need to create a storage account. It'll create a storage account for you. It's all good. And the networking. I'll enable the public access so that I can make the changes into the logic app. Let's not enable the application inside and review and create and create. However, in the case of production environment, it's highly recommended that you have application inside because you can see all the logs and what's happening in the logic app. So I'll pause the video and we'll be back once this logic app is deployed. So deployment is successful. Now let's go to the logic app. The logic app is created. Let's go to workflow, create a new workflow. So I'll create a stateful workflow which is for high reliability. Let's name it as SQL workflow create. So a workflow is created. And now in the workflow using the designer, I'll create the trigger and the different actions. But we know that by default, logic app is a public endpoint service and it cannot connect to private virtual machine. And for that, we need the virtual network integration. So before we make changes in the designer, let's go back to logic app, go to the networking. And in the networking, if we'll go to the outbound traffic configuration, there is an option of virtual network integration, which is not configured for now. Let's configure it. Add a virtual network integration. Let's select the virtual network and there is no subnet available. So let's first go to the virtual network. And there are only two subnets. One is database subnet where your SQL virtual machine is deployed. Another one is the Azure Bastion subnet where the Bastion service is deployed. Now let's create another subnet. Let's name it as app subnet. And I think slash 26 should be sufficient or, or let's go for slash 27, which is 32 different IP addresses. Let's add this. Now a new subnet is created with the name app subnet. Let's go back to our logic app. Go to the settings and in the settings networking. In the networking outbound traffic configuration where the VNet integration has to be set up. Let's configure it. Add virtual network integration. Select the virtual network. There is only one virtual network I have and app subnet is available for integration. Let's select it. And now this subnet will be dedicated for VNet integration. Now this subnet is dedicated for virtual network integration. Now do you want the outbound internet traffic? We don't want that. However, if you require it, you can do it. I'll uncheck it. And if you want the network security groups or the route tables to be configured, you can configure it as well as the NAT gateway. But that totally depends on your setup. If you have a firewall, in that case, you need to create a route table so that your traffic can route through firewall because most of the organization, how they configure their network is subnet to subnet communication should also be through the firewall. So in that case, you need to tell the next hop of your traffic that it will be Azure firewall or any other firewall which you're using. Let's apply it. 
and vnet integration is created let's go to the virtual network and the subnets and you can see now it's dedicated to the server farm however for others there is no delegation but in the app subnet now it's dedicated and you cannot create any virtual machine or any other resource in it so now let's go back to logic app again go to the workflows sql workflow let's go to the designer and let's add a trigger so search for request which will be http trigger request url will be generated after we save it so that means once this url is created you can run this http url and this workflow will be triggered or you can trigger it manually too now add an action let's look for sql there is a connector and you can see the sql server cmo and let's go to get tables so we'll get the table now we need to create a connection first so let's create a connection connection name is let's name it as sql connection we'll use the sql server authentication what is the sql server name that is the name of the server let's open it again let's go to the virtual machine sql server 01 or instead of that let's provide the ip address so the private ip is 100068 so instead of the server name and providing the ip address database name is which we have recently created the name is test db and the username and password username is sql user and i'll quickly provide the password so that's all we are not setting up any gateway and create a new connection so it's taking a long time so that doesn't look like a good sign looks like there is some problem let's wait for it after a minute or so we have got the gateway timeout error so that means our logic app cannot connect to the sql server let's quickly go to sql server in the networking go to network settings and in the nsg all the inbound ports any port any protocol within the virtual network is allowed and the case is same with the outbound port also so that means the connectivity should happen but there is some problem and this is an important thing because if you'll use the same sql server connector you can connect to the different sql databases sql managed instances as well as the data gateway but it doesn't work in the case of the sql virtual machine and there is no documentation for it so let's remove this let's delete this add a new action this time look for sql server and scroll down and you will see in app sql server let's see more get tables and in this case let's name it as sql connection and in this case we can either choose the connection string active directory auth or manage identity but let's go for connection string so i have just copied the connection string and it should look something like that server server ip address database name user id and password so let's create new and it's created so let's try to run this save it and this is saving the workflow for now it's saved go to overview let's wait for few seconds till all the information is visible here the workflow url it took a minute or so to generate the workflow url 
and when we were using the designer and added the trigger it was mentioned that once you will save the designer that the workflow url will be generated now there are two options to run this as you can see the run history there are showing zero runs either run it manually from here or use this url it's an http url run it here and this should trigger the logic app and now you can see showing one runs and click on this and perfect it's successful let's go to get tables and it's providing the employees table so that means now our logic app using the vnet integration can connect to the private ip of the sql server we are using the sql connector it's connecting to the database too and getting the details of the table so the two very important things to consider is if you want your logic app to connect to sql server virtual machine in that case first you need to do the vnet integration second one don't use the version 2 of the sql connector you have to use the version 1 or in app sql connector otherwise the connection doesn't work and i have spent hours in troubleshooting it but it's not working and there is no microsoft documentation to justify this so this is the reason i'm making this video i hope this will be helpful for you please like and subscribe thank you so much